Hi everyone and welcome to Investing in Canada. In this course, our objective is to help you make your investments in the most efficient way. So in this section, we are discussing different types of investment accounts. So we have already covered tax-free savings account, RRSP, RESPs. So if you haven't watched those videos yet, please go to the previous videos and watch them. In this session, we are going to discuss about tax-free first home savings account that was recently launched. So the acronym for that is FHSA, first housing savings account. Okay, so let's start with it. So if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe and at activate the notifications for more videos like this. Our channel is Edufin Wizards on YouTube. You can also get access to the complete course on Udemy or Skillshare. The links are in the description. So please check them out. Okay, so the account that we are going to discuss is Tax-Free First Home Savings Account, FHSA. So first home savings account that was launched in the recent budget that is 2022 budget. The features of this, it's a hybrid vehicle between RRSP and TFSA. So it combines features of like tax-free savings account traditionally that we always have and registered retirement savings plan. So it combines features of that. So what features does it combine? So all the growth in this account is tax-free. So that's a feature it takes from TFSA. So whatever dividends, interest, growth you get in this account is tax free. And whatever contributions you put in into this account, you get a tax deduction for that. So it's a combination of RRSP and TFSA. So Canadian residents who are at least 18 years of age and who haven't lived in a home that they owned in a year the account was opened or in previous four years, are eligible to open it. Now these contributions that you have put into this account, they can be invested in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETF, REITs, etc. The maximum contribution into this account is $8,000 per year and the lifetime limit that you can contribute is $40,000 in your like in the account's lifetime. The deductions are tax deductible while the withdrawals made to purchase the first homes are not taxable at all. So whatever gains, right, whatever dividends, interest you earn in that account is tax free, right? Plus whenever you contribute, you get a tax deduction. The withdrawals can only be made once and no later, no later than 15 years after the account is open. So after 15 years, you have to withdraw right the amount from it and buy the first house so nature of the plan so fh fhsa the nature of the plan it is for individuals the plan managers are financial institutions it can be like rbc or like it can be wealth simple like players like that objective of the plan it's a saving vehicle for purchase of first property this is the key point it's not applicable if you already have a house but if you're saving up for your first property especially those 18 year olds like that are just starting their first job and want to buy a house eventually it's a great vehicle for them the year of the beginning of the plan is 2023 the interaction between plans are not specified except for the choice between home buyer's plan and withdrawal from the same property. Opening condition, you need to be a Canadian resident. Additional opening condition, you did not leave in a home that they owned in a year of opening or four previous years, right? Maximum time within a year of first withdrawal or at least 15 years after the account is first open. So you have to like withdraw the whole amount that you accumulate in this account 15 years from the date of your opening. Within 15 years, you can withdraw any time, but up to 15 years is the maximum 15 years is the time given to you. Minimum age requirement 18 years, maximum there is no uh, conditions. Contributions are tax deductible. So whenever you contribute, you get a tax deduction. Deadline to contribute, it's not specified, but it is probably like RRSP. Deferral of deductions, like the of contributions, it's not specified. Annual contribution limit is $8,000. Lifetime contribution is $40,000. Indexation of contribution is not there. So $8,000 is a fixed amount. 
So it doesn't change because of inflation rate like tax free savings account does. Threshold of allowable excess contribution is not specified. Taxes on excess contribution not specified. Unused annual, annual contribution you can uh, take it forward. It's currently not cumulative. So if you miss contributing, you miss contributing. Yield is not uh, taxable. Qualifying and prohibited investments, they haven't specified those yet. Withdrawals are non-taxable if used for purchase of first house, right? Limited to one home for a life. Otherwise, it is taxable. Adjustment of balance of contributions when withdrawing, no. Transfer of money from an RRSP, no tax consequence subject to annual and cumulative limits. Transfers of sum from an FHSA, not applicable. Conversion of plan, it's not there, but on the expiry of maximum term, you can transfer the amount into an RRSP if you have room. So if you have not, if you bought a house, but you did not use the money in your FHSA, you then you can transfer it to an RRSP if you have enough room. Impact on selected income based benefits on credit. Contributions will impact. Yes, withdrawals will not impact if you're using it for the first time. Contributions will reduce your taxes. Withdrawals will be tax free, doesn't impact your income at all, doesn't impact any government benefit you're getting. But if you're not using it for the house, then it is taxable. Consideration in the fa uh, family patrimony, it's applicable to Quebec, it's not there. Quebec specific rules, yes. It can be seized in the case of bankruptcy, yes. It's not banks bankruptcy protected. Liability to tax at the time of death, not specified yet. Tax liability for withdrawals when you become a non-resident, not specified yet. Contribution by spouse, not specified. Offer to loan security, it is currently not specified. So let's look at a case study. This is a brand new account. The terms are not entirely clear. By the next year, it would be more clearer when it actually launches. So let's look at a case study and try to understand how it would tend to work. So first of all, what happens if you have invested $2,500 for the next 15 years and the investment rate is 4%. So let's see what will happen. So I'll go to an Excel sheet. So what is happening for the next 15 years for buying your first house, you're contributing 2,500, right? It is invested at 4%. I've taken a conservative rate because it's for your house. You do not want to take too much risk. So this goes to 2600 next year, 26 plus 2500 get invested. It grows to 5300, 8000, so on and so forth to $52,000. So in total, you have made contributions of 37500 and you ended up with $52,000, right? This will be entirely tax free. So if you use this amount to buy your like down payment of your first house, then this will be entirely tax free. So this is one advantage. The other advantage is you will get a tax refund. Okay. Why you will get a tax refund? So it's basically a tax deduction you will get. So your tax will cease will be lower because whatever you contribute, you're eligible for a tax deduction. So let's say your income tax bracket is 30%. Your average marginal tax rate is 30%. So what will happen? This 2,500 that you're putting in 30% of that right will come back to you as a tax deduction your taxes will be lower or if you might get a 750 dollars tax refund if you're claiming these contributions so each year you're going to get seven and fifth seven hundred and fifty dollars as a tax refund so in total you actually got eleven thousand and two fifty right as tax refund. So you got this back as a tax refund. So how much did you actually invest? You invested 37,500, but got 11,250 back in tax refunds. So you actually invested 26,250 and you have a $52,000 tax free amount that you can use to buy a house. So this is an excellent plan. If you're saving up for down payment, two things you get a deduction for whatever contributions you are making. So you get a tax refund, right? Or a tax deduction. Plus 
whatever the growth in the fund if you use it for buying your first house then it will be completely tax free so these are the two benefits tax free amount completely plus a tax refund that you get by contributions so amazing account i urge you to look into it if you are saving up for buying your first house okay <clears throat> So please subscribe and activate notifications for more videos like this our channel is edufin wizards on youtube so you can get access to the complete course on udemy or skillshare the links are in the description thank you for your time i hope this added value to you right i will make an updated video on this account when it actually launches right so take care and stay healthy